On this episode of China Uncensored, upholding China's constitution is against the law. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Now, I've gotten some flack recently on this show for only reporting on the negative things about China. Well, that changes today, folks. Today, I'm talking about someone who's really tried to stand up and make a difference in China. A lawyer who worked tirelessly to better the lives of the poor and underrepresented. A man who was named one of the country's top 10 lawyers by the Chinese Ministry of Justice. That's right, by the government. His name? Gao Zhisheng. Why am I talking about him now? Because he just got out of prison. Now, there's nothing I'd like more than to talk about how Gao Zhisheng worked himself up from humble origins. He was literally born in a cave and educated himself by listening outside a classroom window because his family was too poor to afford elementary school. And how, inspired by his mother and his Christian faith, he devoted his law career to helping the disadvantaged. Unfortunately, I sound sarcastic even when I'm being serious. So I guess that puts a uh, kibosh kind of on the whole touching backstory. But the good news is, last week, Gao was released from prison after serving a three-year sentence. The bad news is, he was badly tortured, and he's under heavy surveillance. And there's no guarantee he won't quickly end up right back in detention, or house arrest. Gao decided to become a lawyer in 1991 when he saw a newspaper article about a plan by Deng Xiaoping, then leader of China, to train 150,000 new lawyers to develop China's legal system. Now, somehow he got the crazy idea that that meant he could use the law to defend Chinese people based on China's constitution. I mean, have you read that thing? Just listen to this. China's constitution guarantees freedom of speech, press, and assembly, the freedom to criticize the government, and freedom of religious belief. <laughs> I wish I had their writers. Gao worked with the underprivileged, often pro bono. In 2001, he was named one of the country's 10 best lawyers by the Ministry of Justice for defending victims of medical malpractice and peoples whose land and homes had been forcibly taken by local officials. But he also was making some enemies, like when he publicly accused Guangdong officials of brazen murderous schemes for seizing hundreds of acres of farmland. All that was more or less fine, however. Gao wasn't getting harassed more than the average rights lawyer. Like he said, you cannot be a rights lawyer in China without becoming a rights case yourself. But then in 2005, Gao touched the third rail of Chinese society the Communist Party's persecution of the spiritual practice Falun Gong. Gao launched his own investigation, interviewing Falun Gong practitioners who had been jailed and tortured for their beliefs. He was so affected by his experience that he began publishing open letters to party leaders, urging them to stop persecuting Falun Gong. Can you guess how that turned out? In what was surely total coincidence, state security agents, aka the secret police, started to drop by Gao's house. They mentioned that that pesky Falun Gong issue was more of a political thing, not a legal issue. Never mind the fact that people were being totally legally tortured, and that Gao should just leave well enough alone. Plus, it would be a shame if anything happened to his law practice after all his hard work. Knowing full well the consequences, Gao continued writing about Falun Gong. Police began camping outside at his house, putting his family under 24-7 surveillance. He was informed that his law firm had moved offices in Beijing without registering their new address, which was, quote, a serious violation of the law on managing the registration of law firms. For this flagrant violation of the law, his firm would be suspended and he would lose his own law license. Gao escaped to a top secret location where he continued to interview Falun Gong practitioners and began working on a case involving persecuted underground house Christians. At the end of 2005, he also wrote a public statement renouncing his membership in the Chinese Communist Party. He wrote that quitting this inhumane, unjust, and evil party was the proudest day of my life. According to Amnesty International, in early 2006, Gao was nearly assassinated. In August 2006, he disappeared while visiting family and was formally arrested a month later. He was eventually convicted of inciting subversion of state power, given a suspended prison sentence, and forced to make a public confession. 
After being released, Gao recanted his confession and gave a detailed account of how he was tortured in custody. He was detained again in 2007 after writing to the U.S. Congress and calling for a boycott of the Beijing Olympics. His family was still under constant surveillance. In January 2009, his wife and their two children escaped China and fled to the U.S. Gao was abducted again in February. No one knew where he was and rumors spread that he had been killed. That certainly wasn't helped when, in response to international outcry, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesman released a statement saying that Gao was where he should be. Where he should be turned out to be a series of unofficial detentions from 2009 to 2011, followed by a three-year prison term for violating his probation, which just ended on August 7th. So what happens now? Gao begins a one-year sentence of deprivation of political rights, which includes not being allowed to talk to the media. He's staying with family, but still watched 24-7 by police. According to family members, he was starved in prison and repeatedly tortured. They say he can barely speak. Although he is suffering from health problems, he hasn't been allowed to see a doctor. His wife, Gung He, is calling for the Chinese government to allow Gao to come to the U.S. for treatment. It seems that Gao Zhisheng has been released from prison, but he still isn't free. And he won't be free unless he can leave China. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. If you want to learn more about Gao, I highly recommend the documentary Transcending Fear, the story of Gao Zhisheng. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.